You know, after after watching after watching that uh that little scoot disclaimer, you would think scoot was was the longest reign in one year. I, I'm starting to think that I should have been as depressed when I lost. You wasn't ordained by the gods up above. <laughs> I was, and it was just taken from me like that. Well, I mean, you got to understand, if I wasn't ordained or chosen, then how did this thing come to be? Doesn't I matter. I am the prophecy. And see, that title is going to come home to roost. It's going to come. See, that's the thing. I'm I'm fine with this because I I, I realize this. Everybody has to have their chance with it, I guess. But at the end of the day, I may have lost set current crown and everything, but I hold I hold the title of longest reigning and most dominant. It, it's, it's it's what it is this king the crown it, it it it's for me. Oh, I wasn't even finished. I wasn't. I didn't finish what I was saying. You know, it doesn't matter. Me. I won, sir. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> hey, Google. That, oh wow, Google didn't even want to stop. Um, I'm gonna have to let it go for one more go, guys. I don't know. I can't. It's just it's not on my control here. You know, at, at least at least you didn't do anything obnoxious, like you know, get a sword or put a ring on. You know. You know that's true. I didn't do anything like that yet. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, whenever we are, whenever we are I mean, done. We can start talking about the show. I mean, guys, guys, Revolution is such a long way away. I gotta, I gotta let this one, you know, we gotta let it ride. I mean, you can also defend that said title at, you know, Winter is Coming. Oh, Royal I Rumble. mean, assuming, assuming Winter is Coming actually comes. Or oh, oh, Royal Rumble, you know, Winter is Coming. It's coming. I mean, I'm this gonna... was an A, this was an AEW victory. Do we really want to cross the streams here, guys? Come on. I we mean, have before. This is true. But but this was a special night. Fair enough. <laughs> but, of course, it is not for me to decide when this will be challenged, only when the next pay-per-view is. So, if that happens to be Royal Rumble, so be it. Enough. But, uh, full gear. Here, here, here's the thing. I don't I don't blame me and Scoot not winning on bad predictions. I blame it on awesome booking because all of this was very unpredictable. Well, this is very close though. Um yeah, yeah. I, I I was out I was out of the of the running once the main event hit. So for me, yeah, that that was it was a done deal. Oh, that's fair. Well, no, you were out once. Uh, once cows, once cows got got yeah. yeah. And then I lost due to the fact of the super click. But we'll get there. We'll get there. There was um, a couple of things on this show I wasn't really there with, but we'll get there when we start talking about it. Yeah, there there, there were definitely a few weird things on on, on the show. Um, two very glaring things that stood out to me most definitely that I was just like, huh? But yeah, like Scoot said, we'll, we'll jump right. We'll jump into it and starting, you know, fuck it. We'll start with the fucking buy-in. Um, Nyla Rose and Jamie Hayter versus Carl Sheeta and Tootsie Rosa. Um, 
this is where this is where things started going bad for me because I I just knew that the Hills were winning this one. I just knew it. And I you was know, fucking wrong. I thought, I thought you was going to get that W when they kept highlighting Serena Deep. I was like, shit. Yeah. I was honestly expecting Deep to run out with how much they mentioned her. Me too. That's why I was like, shit. <laughs> Nothing's going to get this point. For real. But you know what's funny is that I'm so used to, again, that WWE mindset where they book a certain way. So you're used to the True. same rigmarole to where it's like, okay, well, they're going to go with, they're going to go at each other in the tournament. So they're not going to have the heels just lose back to back like that. But, you know, AEW. So, hey. <laughs> yeah. Still, 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 still a passable match. I mean, it, it, it was good for the buy in. Um, not something I'm going to write home about, but. Yeah. Yeah, but it was it was serviceable for for a buy in. And I'm glad Serena Deep was there because I'm glad that she's getting, you know, even though she's not in the ring right now, she's still getting a good TV time as far as showing what her potential star power is. So I like that. Mm -hmm. um, same, same. The surprise. The surprise when the show started. They started off on a bang. Darby Allen and MJF. Um. Good match. Yeah. Good match, yeah. I'm gl one thing that I'm glad about is that Sting, Wardlow, uh, Sean Spears, they didn't play too much of a factor. I think they had that split second when yeah. they came in. Sting shut that down real quick and then left it at that. I, and they made it make sense. Um, MJF still getting his cheeky victory with the uh, headlock takeover. <laughs> right? not, to mention the, not to mention the ring cheap shot. Absolutely. Which I'm look, and I'm not. I, I have to suspend my my I, my my belief in this one because it's just hard for me because it's not brass knuckles. It's just a fucking ring. I I just don't see it knocking anybody out like that. But because it's not like he's like extending the ring finger or nothing. He's just throwing a regular punch, like you said. It's not like he's using knucks, you know. But it's not I like it's the blade and the bunny, the how they do. Yeah. I guess it's just a play into the aspect of the ring, you know. Well, which I don't understand why. I mean, I, I guess it works like a Hall of Fame ring or a Super Bowl ring where if you won, you just got it. Because normally you would think that after somebody else has won that, uh, that battle royal, I think you'd stop wearing it. But, you know, being, I guess, the first, the first person to win that makes sense. So. But um, this is a serviceable match for for these two. I'm glad that they didn't overdo it with a lot of things. I'm glad this was this was kept still pretty simple, and mm -hmm. you didn't get Darby going over the top with everything. So that was a good thing. It still it still played to MJF's uh, wheelhouse, and it showcased why you could kind of see him being the first person out of the four pillars that's going to get that that shot to where he can actually attain. A world championship. So, I mean, considering the events of later, it's a possibility. Most definitely. Right. So, but uh, yeah, um, I had a feeling MJF was going to take it because Darby is going to be Darby. MJF needs to be that person to say. I beat your heroes, quote unquote. I beat all these people who y'all love. I think if it was to happen, I think MJF possibly need to get his win back over Moxley at some point. Mm -hmm. And then, then eventually challenge again for the world title. But I can definitely see MJF being the first of the four pillars to be world champion. Yeah. Yeah, it makes sense. And plus, I think I think Darby will, will get his win back over MJF potentially for yeah. said world championship. Yeah, so, I can definitely see that. Uh, I gotta say though, I see MJF's title reign being a lengthy one though if he gets it. Think so? Yeah. You know what? Yeah, that makes sense. Um, him being 
basically the AEW's top hill at this point because mm-hmm. this man is definitely hated on on way more than just one front. So, yeah, I don't see it being as long as Kenny's. I see it being months long, just enough to wet the whistle to get every to get under everybody's skin, and then have Darby come in and then just like get that that huge pop. Mm-hmm. Um, uh-huh. So, we'll definitely see what happens there. Uh, any other thoughts on this match? Uh, like I said, it was pretty good for the two pillars to to show off that this is why we're the future of this company. Yeah. I got a second that. I, I will say uh, this. Oh, go ahead, Yeager. I was just saying, I, like, as mentioned, I definitely liked the minimal amount of interference, even though there mm-hmm. was some. Now, even though I do like this match, there's a part of me that still likes MJF and Sammy Guevara's match a little bit better than this one. Okay. I can see that. Yeah. Just, just because it, it, it showcased both of what – MJF and Sammy Guevara could do in one match with Darby and MJF because their styles are so different. You ha- you end up having to take away from one of them. Yeah, and that's what happened here because Darby, like this, this wasn't like with uh with Darby and and Cody. With Darby and Cody, it was showcasing Darby for the most part, and then mm-hmm. Cody ended up helping him by ha- by by going into that uh that time limit draw, and with mm-hmm. this. You know, you kind of knew that MGF was gonna do something to come out of the, come out of it with that win. So, yeah, but still liked it though. Still liked this match. Mm-hmm. Um, then we have a fantastic match from from this tag from from both of these tag teams, but a very very wonky ending that made absolutely no fucking sense to me. And maybe y'all can explain it to me. I watched it. Okay, so shout outs to my ninjas, uh, Boss and Aranya. While I was watching Full Gear, I was playing Terraria. Okay. And there were some things I missed. This was one of the things I missed, and I caught it today. Okay. What happened was... I don't know what FTR was going through. I don't know if they had the idea of all white people look alike. But the idea was for Cash to wear masks to fool them to thinking it was Dax. So, but they, because Dax was technically the legal man. Yeah. So they technically pinned the wrong man. So that can be FTR's way out by saying, yeah, y'all won the match, but y'all pinned the wrong man. Okay, so does, does this so, prolong the feud then, or I, what is this? Okay, so I guess so. Yeah, I guess so. that's what I'm thinking here because it, it was because my my thought on it, which is why it was so weird to me, is the fact that I assumed that once they realized it was the wrong person, they were going to restart the match. Me too. That's what then, I thought would happen too. Yeah. Yeah, and then when it just kind of ended, I was like, "Wait, that's it." But then there was a part of me that did think, okay, well, maybe they may prolong this into another match where FTR actually does end up taking those titles. Yeah. So, because so, when I watched it again today, I was like, why the hell is Cash win the the mask for? Like, I thought the mask might have been gimmicked or something, kind of like some, you know, the mask might have had like some extra weight in it or something, you know. But no, they was trying to fool. Was- they was trying to fool FT um, uh, the Lucha Brothers. But I, mean, I was thinking a little it. step further. I was thinking, man, that's probably not even uh, FTR that they just pinned, and then they would just prolong, like restart the match from there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But but yeah, that was <laughs> then, to do the idea was that they pinned the wrong man. But I mean, still though, why? Uh, I mean, you could have done that without the mask play. Yeah, you could have done like, like, could have been like oh, the referee didn't know, who, like the referee like lost track of who was legal or something. You could have done that without yeah, that whole match. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, because like when I originally watched it, I was like, why is he wearing the mask for? But then when I watched it today, that's when I saw mm-hmm. that they were trying to confuse the Lucha Bros, but it backfired. Right, so, right. You know, like I said, most likely for story purposes, I wouldn't be surprised. Come Dynamite. Or uh, Rampage, we're going to get FTR being like, hey, y'all didn't even pin the right man. So technically, 
y'all didn't beat us, blah, 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 blah. Few still on. Exactly. It can work. Now, well, now, so now I have, to, I have to propose a question then. Mm -hmm. Do we see in this next match FTR take those titles? I would imagine. Yeah. So, so that they, they'd hold both the AEW and AAA tag titles. Yes. At this point, I can see it because the issue I'm having with the Lucha Brothers per personally, they're great. They're a great tag team. They're great wrestlers. The problem is where does the longevity go in their run? Because at mm -hmm. least in the Young Bucks case, they were the heels. You had to topple the elite. Yeah. In their yeah. case, they can technically be bested by any tag team. Like they don't have like a a heel gimmick or they don't have like a it's just like they can technically be beaten by any random tag team, quote unquote. Like I said, nothing against them is that there's nothing there's no know, like tier list for them. I'm sorry to say it yeah, like that, but like, you know, at least if FTR gets the belt back, we know who's going to be knocking at FTR's mm. door. True. Mm. Like, we know, you know, powerful going to be like, hey, you. <laughs> we won't you could belts. throw almost any team at Lucha Bros, and I would be, like, and if they beat them for the belts, I would be like, all right, I believe it. Exactly. Exactly. Hmm. Shit, you could probably throw a 2.0 at it and then just have them get like a fuck finish or something or like a fluke win, and I'd be like, all right, that's that's completely fine. Right. They, they will be future tag champs. Oh, I, I see it for sure. I can see it. Um, but yeah, you got you guys actually do raise an interesting uh thing there because that I I never looked at it like that. I never thought about it because I'm thinking like, okay, well, Lucha Bros are Lucha Bros. And, you know, they're, they're fantastic in the ring, but I never yeah. thought of them in that aspect of where you would yeah. kind of see Young Bucks or FTR. So, yeah, that actually does make a lot more sense. But that also um, extends what I was saying about them probably having like two to three more, uh, two to three tag defenses and then losing those titles before the end of the year. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So, yeah, I, I agree. I agree with you guys. Uh, and, and that's another thing about, about this pay-per-view. Well, I think, I guess, AEW pay-per-views in general, because I didn't notice it with every other pay-per-view that they've had until full mm -hmm. year. And then everything kind of just made sense, is that there is absolutely zero downtime in AEW pay-per-views. <laughs> There really isn't. Oh, yeah. Because now, and one, I'm not complaining, not not in the slightest, but well, I'm complaining a little bit because sometimes I do want to kind of have like that small break to kind of be like, you let me grab this, let me grab that. But because I'm so focused on the TV, that fatigue sets in later on, and mm -hmm. I don't like that. Um. Which is which? I guess which is a testament to AEW because with WWE, they even have filler and shit and all that, and I still get fatigued. But that's only because like mm -hmm. it's shit pay per views half the time. That's why they but, gave you the bathroom break match. Uh, yes, they did, and I took that gloriously. Yo. I took that time to use the restroom, walk my dog, all that. But we'll get we'll get to that too when we get there. Yeah, but uh, like I said, this match wasn't bad. It wasn't my one of my favorite Lucha Bros match, nor was it one of my favorite FTR matches. It was a match, I guess, that just needed to happen. But like I said, the issue is, is that Lucha Brothers, unfortunately, and I really don't want to label them as this, they're transitional champions. Yeah. They got they got a nice transition time. Shit. <laughs> I mean, well, you got to think oh. AEW <clears throat> does title changes on. You got to think the most random title change that happened was Winter is Coming. Oh, with and, Mox uh, and uh, Omega. Well, and I guess you can kind of say Sammy beat Miro too, but you know, mm. their their I ain't gonna say their title changes are obvious, but they're usually. They're usually on a grand scale. Yeah. 
Yeah. I got to say, though, there wasn't really – there's not really so much build and story for the Lucha Bros opponents, though. I mean, except yeah. from the – aside from the Young Bucks, like, that was that was a hell of a build. Yeah. But since they've become champs, they have not had, like, a clear, defined opponent. Other than FTR. Like, yeah. I mean, yeah. But even with FTR being thrown into it, they came in as – under the guise of Luchadors. Mm-hmm. And then it's True. been like, oh well, fuck these guys. And now let's 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 get even with them or something. And then they didn't even uh, wrestle for the belt yeah. that they lost. <clears throat> but like, I don't know if they're gonna sit on FTR for a minute or if they're gonna go right back into it. If they do go ba- right back into it, then I see them losing their next defense. If not, they're gonna be like, yeah. oh no, we beat you. Like y'all got to wait a minute. Then we'll see how that goes. I don't know. No, I I think I I think I think I think we all might be on to something with this because there's a lot of things that actually cater to FTR actually winning the 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 tag titles from Lucha Brothers because now that inner circle is done with the goofy shit. So supposedly at this point. I mean we hope. I mean yeah, we hope. It, this gets pro- this gets problem powerful. Uh, the leeway to actually go back into the title hunt. And if FTR does take those titles, we may get them dodging proud and powerful for a bit. And then finally Mm -hmm. them, because I don't think right now, I don't think proud and powerful are ranked. Uh, Let me just check real quick. Um, They've been ranked. Yeah, they're not ranked right now. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah, so that that's that's perfect. So if we if we take that time where FTR wins those titles, let's say on Dynamite, uh, mm-hmm. if that's if that's going to be a thing, or Rampage, and we take these next months to get Proud and Powerful back into the the rankings, and then probably a Revolution, we get that match. Mm-hmm. So I think that would make the most sense because again, like I said before, and I'm sticking to this shit. I don't see any fucking long title reigns happening in 2022. Yeah, like at I all. I can see that. So, but from there, isn't bold well for Hangman? Or, oh, spoilers. No, no, it, it 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 does not. And one of uh, these two men, as well as MGF, could put it into that. Uh, Daniel Sin and Miro. Fall. The start of this my was- down. This was probably the hardest match for me to call as well. Um, and something kept nagging at me when I said Miro. Nah, Dang. man, nah, change it, change it, change it, change it. <laughs> something, something kept nagging at me too by saying, because the thing is, I said it on here. Yep. Spoilers again, Hangman's first opponent was going to be Brian. I said it. You did. A few podcasts ago. When it was supposed to be when 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 we were predicting the tournament between Moxley and Danielson, I said Danielson was going to be uh, Hangman's first opponent, and most likely he was going to give him his first loss, and I went against that. Yeah, but at the same time, Miro was so fucking convincing. Yeah, that it was hard to go against that as well. Don't go against the Bulgarian brute, man. This is why I can't be mad at Miro's loss is because, I mean, yeah, yes, I'm mad because I would have rather him lose to Hangman for the title. But at the same time, you think about him losing to Brian, and it's like, I mean, come on. It's it's kind of hard with with his track record that because he's been on a fucking tear wrestling on – Dynamite Rampage pay per views back to back yep. to back to back to fucking. Well, back. look at it this way, and this is the way I kind of materialized it in my head. Which one was technically more believable, Miro losing to Sammy or Miro losing to Brian? Yeesh. I mean, I want to say Brian. Me too. I would say Miro losing to Brian. 
it's technically more believable than him losing to Guevara. The, the reason I agree with you guys, and it's and, and it's only slightly, and it's really because of Miro, which is which is crazy because we're we're talking about Brian here, is because of the fact that towards the end of the match where Miro was baiting Danielson to kick him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Brian helped make Miro very believable in that sense. Because even in defeat, it still shows how credible Miro is. And mm-hmm. this is why his story alone, even in defeat, is very fucking intriguing. And I remember because I, I text you guys um that now, even after this, I'm 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 this is this is intriguing to me. Um because now I'm interested in, in where his story goes at this point. Like, I, yeah. it's almost like Miro, win or loss, can't lose any momentum at all. Well, I mean, if he if he loses back to back to back, there might be an issue. But right now, yeah, yeah. Mm. I'm gonna. So the, I'm, I'm kind of excited to see where the forsaken man goes now. See. And it, and it's crazy because I don't think anybody's really asking the question of what happens with Brian and the winner of Hangman and Omega. Obviously, nobody's asking it. No. Nobody's even thinking about the outcome if Brian wins or loses that match. You know, or when that match yeah. even is. I just had a weird correlation in my head. Uh, I don't know how well y'all kept up with the Grammys years ago. But it was a depends on how long ago. Well, true. It was at it was at Grammys where Kanye had won his Grammy, and then his speech was many people kept saying, "Hey, yay, what you gonna do if you don't win that Grammy?" And then he was like, "Well, I guess we'll never know." I kind of feel like this is the parallel with Miro. It's like, "Hey, Miro, what's gonna happen if you don't win that number one contendership?" I guess we about to find out. Yeah. Oh, that's good. That's yeah. Good. I guess we were about to find out. Damn, that that's a great analogy. <laughs> I guess we we're about to find out because okay, he still had so he apparently he can't go home to his wife. His God has definitely forsaken him, so we definitely about to see what's about to happen now. Okay, so then let me ask this though: uh-huh. Do we get? Silence from Miro for for a period of time, or do we get more promos and a pissed off Miro? Or do we get, or do we get his hot wife coming to him since he can't go to her? I would hope, personally speaking, I want him to not be present Wednesday nor Friday. Okay, give him a week so that way it's like. In the back of your mind, you're like, "What the fuck is Miro?" Yeah, and you know, honestly, when he comes back, I don't want a promo. I just want him to go out there and savagely. You know, you know what I actually want Miro to do? The wreck shit. I want Miro to come out during a match and just fuck up both of the opponents, or or fuck up a tag team match or something to really show. His true dominance, because if Miro beats up four people, then you like, goddamn, like you know. So if he comes back, I don't want a promo. I want him to just go out there and just wreck shit. And I want it to be so believable to where the whole goddamn backstage staff has to come out and like get him away, get him out the ring. Okay. Hmm. You're saying you need Ruby Soho involved. Gotcha. <laughs> Obviously, she know how to defuse situations. So, <laughs> apparently, um, well, speaking of diffuse situations, more so not so diffuse. Christian Cage, Jurassic Express versus Super Click. All right, I'm gonna be honest. This is this is our platform to be honest. I was not the biggest fan of this match. It felt like it took a little too long. 
I was not the biggest fan. I felt like, like you, honestly, this match was a means to an end to get these six men on the card. But I wasn't the biggest fan of this fight. I'd say it went about five minutes too long. Or five minutes over what it should have. Like all the spots that they ran, they could have done that in a, in a tighter time frame. Um, yeah. The outcome was, of course, not what we predicted. Yeah, Which I, don't I really don't know how I feel about that either. But I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give y'all a theory when we get to the end of this too. Now, now that this has happened, and I can see a yeah. clearer picture, and I also read something on Bleacher Report. I'm gonna throw it all at y'all at the end when we get to the main event. But mm-hmm. yeah, I wasn't I wasn't the biggest fan of this match. Yeah, I, I think for me it would have been better had it been two separate matches, both with uh Christian Cage versus Adam Cole and Young mm-hmm. Bucks versus Jurassic Express. I think I would have I think would have benefited Ooh. more if they would have just split those two matches and just had it like that. Because it seemed yeah. like that's where they were going, and then you could have had Probably had Adam Cole go over and then had um, Jurassic Express go over because yeah. Christian doesn't need the win at all, and no. Adam Cole is 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 on, is on a hot streak right now, and Young Bucks can can sever a loss at this point because it would have made more sense for the main event had this shit happen like that. But yeah. you know, hey, they booked it that way. But from something that went on too long to something that was just weird as fuck. Pac and Cody versus Malachi Black and Andrade El Idolo. So, I'm going to say this. If I'm ranking these matches personally, because I'm not going to count the uh, buy-in. If I'm personally ranking these matches, the bathroom break was the worst match of the night. This, by far the second worst of the night. And that last match was third of worst of the night. Personally speaking, this right here, I don't know what the fuck this was. I like everybody within this match. First off, the best thing about this match was uh, Malachi's entrance. Yes. Yeah. But, um, yeah, from, from the beginning... It, it was still kind of weird because you had that, which I don't know if they if they were poking fun at WWE for the whole will they coexist, but I felt like I heard can they coexist or will or some iteration of can they coexist, like maybe like twenty times throughout the entire times. match. Definitely heard that too many times. There was. Oh, go ahead. No, I just, it, it was just weird because I didn't expect that to be an issue. Like, I expect it to be an issue between Pac and Cody, but I never expected it to be an issue because we didn't see anything between there Malachi was, Black and Andrade. Yeah. Like in any show, they've always seemed to have, have this fucking cohesion, and there's never been a fucking issue. So all of a sudden, it's like you have this match happen. It's like, oh, we have some type of issues. The well, I mean, not for nothing, but they, I mean, not for nothing, but that was also confusing me with Cody and Pac because – while they haven't like been best friends or anything, they seem to at least understand each other. And for yeah. them to have this like stupid tiff back and forth was just kind of like an out of nowhere, well, for lack of a better term, WWE thing. Yeah. And and, and to and to that point, it didn't make any sense because even in the promo package before the match, you had Pac say the dialogue. Yeah. We pretty much for for you know to paraphrase we we have a common enemy, but after all you know we'll 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 coexist and we'll you know we'll team up to make this happen. And exactly, done, we're separated. Which, so it's like, which that you know, made sense to me. That made sense to me. But all of a sudden, Andrade and Malachi having this little underlying tension, and it was like, where the fuck that came from? All of a sudden, yeah. I mean, they were always about the business, but I guess Malachi took it more personal and. Andrade didn't, or vice versa. I'm not sure. But yeah, with, with, not... with this match, th- this is what par- part of me also feels like there's something else that, that was supposed to happen sooner, but I guess didn't. 
And I think that has yeah. to do with the Lucha Brothers, which I think that's why the Lucha Brothers are in this lull point with their uh, with their title run. Because, mm-hmm. again, we never got no finality with Andrade and the Lucha Brothers. Uh, well, sure. sorry, Andrade and, no, and Death Triangle really. stuff. So, and yes, I know Pac and, you know, the Andrade thing is there. But that has – you you haven't seen anything in regards to Lucha Brothers and Andrade, you know, since what? All Out. Yes. And – you think they finally join them once they drop the belts? It's it's possible. It would make sense. But at the same time, I don't know what they're planning on doing with House of Black. And I don't know if they want to have two different stables just uh, spawn at the same time. And That's it's right. with they're doing it with these two guys teaming up who are technically potentially going to have two separate stables. Because we already know House of Black is going to be a thing, but with Andrade, there's still no, there's nothing that's stating okay, well, Andrade's got this coming along the pipeline. So yeah. that's where my confusion is, and the other confusion was even at the end of this fucking match, one Black and Andrade lost. Mm-hmm. That's weird. Yeah, and then on top of that, you had Cash Wheeler come out and start pouncing on Pac. Out of nowhere. And then nothing came out of that. It's like, that happened and they just left. So I'm like, the fuck was that? I don't know. Something, there was a well, mystery. Remember, Andrade paid off FTR before. Well, if that's the case, how come Black and Andrade didn't win, though? It's like, something, sure. something, something didn't happen right with this match. It That's just, all I got to say. Yeah, personally. Something, something wrong happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, this is probably one, one of one of the weirder points for me, outside of the whole uh, FTR uh, Lucha Brothers match ending. This was probably the weirdest portion of of the night, as far as matches go. Um, and no, I'm not counting Inner Circle and. In, uh, American top team. That's just a non-factor. But um, after that, we had uh, Britt Baker defending her title against Ty Conti, which I will say Ty Conti did not do any stutter step. But <laughs> there was a lot of slow moments in this match. Yes. Yeah. That I did not like because there were moments where I was like, I can see where this match is going. But because there was a lack of just just pep in the step, it made everything feel less impactful. And because then, I could see. Uh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I said because because I I could see where they were trying to go with some of their with with some of their moments in the match, but because it felt like they were practicing rather than actually going into it, it was kind of taking me out of it. And that was my main thing. But for the most part, I mean, it, it still was a good match, but I just wish they would have just, mm-hmm. you know. The issue, one of the big issues I kept having with this match personally was the commentary team. And once again, mm-hmm. no offense to Ty, but why why they kept saying Ty was Dr. Baker's most challenging opponent. But she's an Olympic level athlete. She's got a blue belt in jiu-jitsu. Right, they're just trying to them. give validation to Ty, I guess. Yeah, the, but like, they just funny... kept saying that, and it was like, hmm. Mm-hmm. And the funny thing about that is that you you hear. So if if you if you if you listen to this match without watching anything and listen to commentary, and then you just end up getting video a visual right after once the match is over, you would think that everything that they were saying was absolutely true because Britt Baker was selling her fatigue after this match. Like you could, yeah. you would think that they had just a fucking drag out fucking brawl with the way that they looked after this match. Cause if you look, they're just breathing hard and heavy and all this other shit. Yeah. And it's like, huh? It's cause even I had to think, I was like, wait, did I, did I mistake what I just watched? And, I'm, and maybe I saw something completely different. 
And I went back mm-hmm. and I watched it again, and I'm like, nope. I didn't. I saw exactly what I thought I saw. But the selling was good. And 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 don't yeah. get me wrong, Ty Conti definitely did good in this match. There were just po- moments in this match that I did not like because it was very slow. But for the most part, again, this title shot for her just came way too soon, which is why I feel it's more catered to the TBS title for right now. I think Ty Conti is going to be an amazing professional wrestler down the line. It's just right now it feels like she's still in a developmental phase. And that's no that's no disrespect to her at all. It's just the fact that this is what I'm seeing on screen. And if there's if she puts a little bit more urgency into what she's doing, it's gonna come off way more believable and she's going to bypass everything that I've just said completely. Right. Uh, because she definitely like her makeup and has has a look of, of a champion. It's just when you see yeah. her in ring. There's just a lot of things that kind of take away from that. So that's that, that just Brazilian flag across her face and the way she had her hair, though, kind of reminded me of Becky Lynch. I'm not going to lie. A little bit. You would have thought she was going to win. Definitely right. did. <laughs> but yeah, she'll have uh, a couple minutes. She'll 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 definitely get yeah. get a title soon enough, but it just won't be that soon. But Britt Baker does definitely retain. Uh, no surprise there because we already know where her path is going to dead end at, and we'll see what happens when. Well, I'm pretty well, I'm pretty sure it's going to happen at Revolution. So, you think which, that'll- is, which is. Oh, yeah, like you said, you think that'll be a, a short runs from now on after Britt loses it? Because it'll be it, – because it, right now it's it's almost like they, they plan that TBS tournament at the perfect time because it's it's sandwiched in between full gear. Well, I mean, it's, it, it happened before full gear, but the, the rest of that tournament is sandwiched in between full gear and revolution because it's going to run through, what, January? No, they said the finals is January 5th. Okay, perfect. Yeah. So January we get a new T uh we get a TBS champ and then that's when we start getting the build for Thunder Rosa and Britt Baker so, up to Revolution. Wait, are we gonna get a couple more weeks of rounds and then we're gonna just put it on hiatus for a month? Is that what I'm understanding? I think they're gonna have a match each week if that's the case. Because I okay. think we have I think I think we're in what in the wait, are we in the semifinals? We did in the semifinals or the quarterfinals. I think we're in the quarterfinals. Yeah, they're in the quarter. Yeah, yeah, because that 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 would make more sense. That that gives us what about um, four weeks. So a match a week, and then probably a week or two for a build for the finals, and then the finals. Okay. If that if that's how they're planning on doing it, I don't know. Tony Khan's got that shit all. All wrapped up, so. Um, but yeah, Britt Baker goes over. No surprise there. We expected it. We predicted it. We weren't going against Britt Baker at all, and we're not going to until we know exactly. You know when Tootsie Rolls like, we know goes, exactly <laughs> when the <to> call. Right. <laughs> all right, Britt. It was a nice run. <laughs> Next up, CM Punk versus Eddie Kingston. Um, that probably one of the most believable starts to a match that I've seen in a very long time. Right, my god, dude, that fucking backhand! I almost thought that shit was legit for a quick second. It happened, you know, it happened so quick that it was like, wait, whoa, oh shit, like. <laughs> Like, I was just looking back at the screen when he did it, and I was just like, ooh! Like, like, oh my god, the bell hadn't even rung, man! Like, holy shit! And then Punk sold the hell out of that. He dropped. And and if he didn't sell it, then Punk, I'm sorry you got rocked. (laughs) (laughs) 
But yeah, this was. I think this match went about maybe eleven minutes, I believe. Mm. And it didn't need to be a long match. No, 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 no it didn't. It it did what it needed to do. I, so I just, I, I, I feel like I have more questions than answers out of this match because I feel like. Eddie Kingston has garnered us a position on the precipice of Punk's inevitable heel turn because I feel like it's coming. Because Punk got booed quite a bit in this match. Okay, so I wasn't tripping that he did get booed. Mm. Oh, no, not at all. Okay. No, when he set up Eddie for the GTS both times, he was getting booed. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, because I was making sure that I heard those boos correctly. On top of that, it was... I guess Minneapolis loved Eddie way more than Punk at that point. And there was this perfect imagery, of course, of bloody face Punk with his tongue out. And it's like... we're we're, We're getting close to it. When I don't yes. know, but it's it's gotta be coming sometime soon. And I know we talked about Mox's hill turn and that being a thing, and potentially Eddie turning hill too. But I think Eddie is becoming a way more sympathetic babyface than a potential believable. I mean, he's already been hill, but I think right now I think they may end up calling an audible. To the point to where he may get over more than they expected him to, and I think he might get Punk's heel turn in that process. I can see that. But if Punk does turn heel, what the fuck happens? Uh, That's the question. I want to know who he turns on. Like who's gonna piss him off just enough? It's gonna be more of who is the person he's gonna like finally snap on. Mm Mm-hmm. Honestly, it would in order for it to make sense, I think it would have to be one of the four pillars. So that leaves... My head immediately went to MJF. does, but nobody, if everybody will start loving Punk again. Yeah, well, true. I said, well, I think I said on a previous podcast, I think if he started to just beat the shit out of uh, Jungle Boy, then it will be like, oh, shit, wait, whoa, Punk, hey. True. What if he did it to Sammy Guevara and took the TNT title? Ooh. Hmm. Hmm. That'd be interesting. Because everybody's trying to figure out like what he's gonna do because then you get a lot of people that, that's pissed off that they think he's being underutilized. You don't see him in the in the world title picture, but TNT title picture, a hill punk taken away from the younger talent, kind of gatekeeping in a way. Yeah. I mean, like you guys said, with FTR being tag with uh, being tag champs, most baby faces are in it for the chase. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I'm just spitballing, but I don't know because Eddie Kingston. It, it feels like Eddie Kingston is is, is going to be on a surprising run as a babyface with a lot of good in his corner. That and would I be think, a. Oh, go ahead. No, no, no. I, I was I was going to say if, you know if if Punk does take that TNT title, you can have Eddie get his win back by actually winning a championship. Mm-hmm. In AEW, and basically getting it back for the younger guys. I was just thinking it should be Sammy now because then you can have Punk go off on him and then Jericho 
who has, well, you can say experience with punk. Ooh, or no, yeah, punk. yeah, like like step in the ring, shove them off, be like, "What the hell's wrong with you?" Then you put the GTS on on Jericho. Mm. Gives Jericho then, something to do. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'm down. I'm yeah, I'm down with that. I'm booking it. Punk won't like a little bit of the bubbly. Nah. Speaking of the inner uh, circle, uh, hey, I'm gonna take a piss real quick. <sighs> <laughs> this was possibly the most WWE match on AEW TV. All right, now I'm back on camera. Hold on. Uh, I want them to know and feel every bit of this dislikement I have for this. Okay. Because the problem is with a lot of people, when you say you dislike a match, they automatically assume you don't like the wrestlers in this match. Stop that stupid shit. Everybody's favorite wrestler has had bad matches that we didn't oh, yeah. like. Mm -hmm. Everybody's favorite wrestler had a match that we was like, that was it. This match right here, this could have been taken off for something else. First yep. things first, how the fuck you have a street fight and you tagging in and out? Then this could have it been down into a 10 man yeah. brawl. And then it just it just became just a what the fuck ever. I saw somebody on the internet said Jericho hit the worst frog splash they ever seen in their life. And he said that was for you, Eddie. I mean, I'm not, I'm, I'm not gonna say he, <laughs> he gave the worst frog splash. I, I'm pretty sure I've seen worse. Yes, I'm pretty sure I've seen worse too. But you know, this maybe match, the worst out of Jericho. This match wasn't it it I I I kinda hated that Jaeger said this <laughs> during the predictions and it came to fruition because he was right. I didn't pay attention at all. Like honestly, <laughs> honestly, when the match first started, and by the time I really had looked up, like I was looking at the, I was looking at my computer here and there, because like I said, I was playing Terraria with the ninjas. So I was looking here and there. By the time I truly focused back, it was when Jericho and Dan Lambert were going at it. Mm. I, I I understand because that that's that's how I was too. Once it started, seeing the entrances, and then I went to use restroom. Took my dog for a walk, came back, and I came back at just the right time because it was again when Jericho and Lambert were in the ring and the Kendo stick spot had happened, mm -hmm. and then went from there. But of course, wait, I went wait, back and I watched wait. shit again. What Kendo stick spot? Oh, you didn't see that part. I don't know. Probably that was not. right before he grabbed the stapler and then did wait, some wait, weird wait, ass. Wait, wait, stapler. Wait. What oh, the fuck yeah. did I miss? <laughs> oh, oh, you didn't see the staple shot. Oh, okay. No. Wait. <laughs> so he, he Yeah, go ahead. No. He, 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 he took a stapler and wait, he swiped who? that Lambert's junk. Uh Jericho? Yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. He yeah. Uh, supposedly stapled Lambert's junk. Uh-huh. After doing the kendo stick spot. And mm -hmm. what do you do with the kendo stick? Well, well he just, he just hit him, then he hit uh, uh, JDS with it as well. Yeah. Ooh, and I then that was pretty much it. Oh, I really did not pay attention to this match. Lord. Okay. Oh, shit. Okay. <laughs> this match, to Scoot's point, could have easily have been just proud and powerful versus men of the year. It, which is what it should have been. It would have been a much better match. Yeah. A much better match. Yeah. Hell, you could have had Sammy defend his fucking uh, TNT title. Against Scorpio. 
Yeah. Yeah. Which Scorpio yeah. is number four on the rankings. But wow. Okay. Uh, so yeah. Yeah. But yeah. That match happened. And then this match. Wait, happened. before we get there. Go ahead. Uh, how do we feel about the never ending saga of Orange Cassidy and Matt Hardy? Oh, it was supposed to be over after Rampage. Oh, you didn't hear what was announced? Oh, no. Wednesday, then. It's Matt Hardy and Butcher or Blade, one of the two, versus. Well, okay, so earlier they I'm talked to Orange Blade. Cassidy. Earlier they talked to Orange Cassidy. And it was supposed to be it's it's a tag team match between Matt Hardy and I want to say is is either Butcher or Blade versus Orange Cassidy and the person of his choosing. Cassidy was like, "Hey, the best friends have worked hard. I'm gonna give them a night off. I'm gonna call up somebody from Chaos." Oh yeah. Later on that night, they reveal it's going to be Cassidy and uh, Ishii. Oh, hero Ishii. Don't. Yeah. Stone Mountain Pitbull, or yeah, yeah. So it's going to Stone be Pitbull one forty one versus Matt Hardy and Butcher or Blade. I can't remember which one it was, but yeah. Well, Cassidy and, and Ishii yeah. have to win that then, and hopefully that's the end of that. You know it's not. You know it's not. <sighs> um, it is what it is with. Hardy family office. Um, I'm I'm so hooked on the idea of Butcher and Blade being in House of Black that mm. HFO isn't even a factor anymore. I'm just hoping that they just leave. Yeah, like that's that's all. Yeah. Of them. yeah. Um. And I'm I'm glad you stopped me, Scoop, because I almost bypassed one of the most important things about the show. Okay. And that is, um, Jay Lethal is all elite. True. You know, I started when you had sent that message. I started to be like, "Where's my bonus points for that?" But I was gonna let that be. <laughs> I called that shit. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's crazy because see, and this thing about Tony Khan, he knows how to keep a fucking secret because it's funny how Jay Lethal. <laughs> was asked that question before about him joining and basically like, I had no talks to nobody. Okay, that's it. And it's done. Nobody said anything yeah. after that. Mm-hmm. And then he pops up and it's like, because that's it was a genuine surprise when I see him. I was like, oh, word? Now I, heard nothing. I heard no rumblings of anybody from ROH signing. Yeah. I'm down to see Black Machismo. We might. Or what was it? Uh, what was the thing that uh, at All In that he had to do? That you had to do to turn him back and forth? You had to like tap him on the shoulder or do something to him. Yeah. Yeah, yeah he kept switching <laughs> back and forth. Yeah. I'd like to see like either that gimmick come back or something of that effect. But I'm down to see Jay Lethal kick some ass. Hell. Yes. Yeah. It's, Ooh, it's, it's, him it's and Punk. Crazy. Him and Punk Ooh. would be nice. Him and Punk. Him and Brian. I look. I just AEW is making it so that way if they lose anybody anytime, somebody. And I mean, it's been case in point. Mox was out. Miro slotted in. And this is the thing about they're actually utilizing their talent the way that they need to be utilizing it. And for everybody that's sitting here saying AEW signed too many people, listen. Nobody's going to wait, 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 wait. Hold on. I don't mean to cut you off. Mm-hmm. I'm going to defend that point with this. Okay. If AEW is signing too many people, how is it that WWE released almost 70 people this year and their roster is still full? So shut the fuck up with that answer. <laughs> shut the fuck up with that answer. So then, okay. So then, I'll, I'll also back that up with this, because now, of course, there, there's a lot of wrestling fans who probably don't watch football. But how many second, third, potentially fourth string quarterbacks do you see play a season? 
It had to be some serious injuries. Some 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 people can't even tell you who who Tom Brady's backup is. Some people can't, can't. even tell you that. But that's what I'm saying. There's a there's a lot of people that are in the back scene that that, that that's that's on the bench that you don't realize who's part of that team still getting a Super Bowl ring, mm-hmm. and you don't notice. So my thing is, if somebody ends up getting hurt, would you rather them have to shuffle yeah. around to try to figure out what they're gonna do, or would you rather them have a credible person they can replace them with? Not everybody's gonna see screen time. It's okay. Mm-hmm. Everybody's gonna get their moment yeah. in the sun, but not everybody can be champion. Don't always so, be time. Yeah. So my thing is this: yeah. everybody loves Miro, everybody loves Omega, everybody loves Hangman, everybody loves Orange Cassidy, everybody loves Sammy Guevara, everybody loves Jungle Boy. People hate MJF, but they love to hate him at the same time. I just uh, researched it. Is uh, Blaine Garrett, by the way? We'll see. And there you go. But that that but that's more that's more to my point though. Mm-hmm. It's that you never know who's going to be a top guy. So, and if they were treating them wrong, like this again, WWE's different story. You hear a lot of stories of people being in catering. You see the same people over and over and over on TV on WWE. On AEW, you get a plethora of people on yes. Dark, Elevation, Rampage, Dynamite. There. Sometimes you don't even see the same types of rematches over and over again. It's rare that you'll see a rematch with the same teams over and over again. Mm-hmm. So my thing is, if that's the case, they're doing one hell of a job as far as I'm concerned. So mm-hmm. be happy with what you got, because if you didn't have it, you complain that people weren't getting the, uh, if you be right. too many of the same thing on TV. So it is what it is, but The best modern professional wrestling story told. My Amen Adam Page story. This a match. Oh my God. Oh, and I guess y'all can get bonus points for Callis coming out in a powder blue suit, I guess. <laughs> I mean, I wish I could have got it, even though I did say it, but when I said it. I said alligator print. You did. But I did say I did say that powder blue though. I was happy, but I wanted that alligator print. But it's all good. Callis was still looking for like he came out, he came out with them shoes though. He came out with them shoes. He put them shoes to work too. Although Jim Ross, I don't appreciate the comment that you made by saying he needs to be um what fined or suspended for, for having those shoes on? <laughs> it's not, it's not, it's not cool. It's not, it's not, it's not, it's not cool. That's not cool, JR. Don't be mad because them Don't shoes be made more than your barbecue sauce. Ooh. Let me stop. Let me stop. I'm just playing, just playing, JR. Anyway, also, also, no kick out of the one ring angel from Hangman. Yeah, there's a reason. There's what a reason. you think? You think Brian? You think Brian's gonna kick out of it? Maybe they might give it to Brian instead. I thought I thought that too. I thought it was I mean, a little peaky that Hangman hit it on Kenny, and Kenny kicked out. Yeah, and Kenny kicked uh, out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, they they uh they covered that up nicely, saying like you can't do it just. Like quite as well as the originator of it. Yeah. yeah. Um, I love I love the V trigger into the buckshot lariat. I love oh, that. Yeah. Um, it's weird because there's a part of me that feels like I, like I wanted more out of this match. Like I I really wanted that that um Shawn Michaels Bret Hart Iron Man match feel. Yeah. But mm. I think I think they're gonna give that to us via um, uh, Omega yeah. and Danielson. Okay. Yeah. But I, I I really wanted that. Like, yo, th- th- this is this is that 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 final because I that's the only thought I can get because this 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 wasn't in the same vein as you know Omega and Okada or you know 
Hell, even 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 Abushi and Okada. Yeah, they didn't have yeah. like those feels where I like feel like they just went to war. Like, this is a again, this is a fantastic match for these two, but um, at the same time, I still wanted more from it. Like I I, I wanted them to give me maybe five ten more minutes of this match. Yeah, maybe if uh, maybe if that inner circle shit didn't happen, then you probably would have got it. Probably, probably. Um, but, uh, how do y'all feel about the end with the Bucks? It it made sense. Yeah, it's like we said, it's setting up. Now, yeah. are we done talking about the match in particular, as far as the match? Because then uh, I'm gonna go into conspiracy theory mode. Well, I, I, I will. I will say this. Um, I'm glad that. He gave Kenny two buckshot lariats. Yes. Yeah. Because it and almost Dennis. plays Did into. He not uh, give him a Dennis? No, I, th- I think he tried to, but I don't think he. No, oh, no, yeah, no, yeah. no, no, he, no. He did. He did do the dead eye because that's when he almost got that that close ass three count. That, that, oh yeah. I'm yeah, sorry, yeah, close ass two count when Aubrey came in. Yeah. And, yeah. You're right. But yeah. <laughs> two buckshot lariats and a dead eye. Damn it! I was that close. <laughs> um. Yeah, this 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 was this was still a good match, but I, I definitely appreciate it. it. Still make Kenny look good. It mm-hmm. again another one that gave me more questions and answers at the end of it because, like I said, I had more questions, and then I think Bleacher Report kind of made things a little clear for me. Okay, because they had a they had an interesting hot take, and Ooh. I think I might be on board on that hot take. Do tell. Adam Cole is gonna betray all three of them. But once Red Dragon gets s- yep. sewed up, yep. Come January, and his and his reasons is he didn't forget that he was kicked out the Bullet Club. Hmm. Oh, that's forget. right. Yeah. Yep. Now we're not even talking about uh, BTE. Mm. Uh, we're talking about just like the, when. Uh, Here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When Marty showed up. Yeah, when Marty, when he did so, the umbrella. They think that Cole is going to betray the Bucks and Omega. Because, as you saw, Cole didn't come out there. He didn't. It was just the Bucks. That's interesting. Well, the way I chopped that up was uh, because Hangman – Came directly to the Bucks saying, Hey, I want to talk to them. He did, Kinda but like, he didn't remember Cole was the first person who got in his way. Yeah. He got in his way too. Huh. Okay. And Cole okay. did kind of somewhat align himself with Bobby Fish as well. True. What's the end? Uh, O'Reilly's contract is up in what? November or December? December. Okay. December. Now the thing is, we, do we, we save love. it for O'Reilly or we save it for KO? Wasn't oh yeah, because fucking for I mean uh, Mount Rushmore. The thing is, KO won't be free until basically February. I think KO's contract is in at the end of January. I think. Huh. You know what? That actually might make a lot of sense because everybody's teasing the whole Mount Rushmore thing. But mm-hmm. what if they don't pull the trigger on that until like way fucking later? Mm-hmm. But it's not the same Mount Rushmore with Bucks, KO. Oh, and, so you're, uh, you're, you're thinking they're going to do Cole, Red Dragon, and uh, KO? Yeah. Hmm. Because mm. Roger Strong is still going to be in NXT. Yeah, Roddy. Yeah, Roddy going to still be in NXT. I think for a little bit longer. Now that would be a nice swerve. Now I also had another interesting swerve that could have happened last night. Not last night. Sorry, uh, Saturday night when the Dark Order came out. Yep. That the Dark Order just started beating the shit out of Hangman. 
and then we would have heard Wyndham's laugh or Wyndham's something, then I would have been like, yes. Yeah, I, I, there's a part of me that thought that shit was going to happen too. Um, But then I went back to what I said when we did our predictions where I was like, they're going to want to leave everybody off on a happy note. Yeah, they want to leave everybody so, on a happy note. But Hangman finally become champ. Yeah, I, when, when, Wyndham's Wyndham's eventually coming. I know that for a fact. Mm-hmm. That, that that's that's gotta be happening. But I think they might give that. I think they're giving everybody time to breathe with everything, especially with uh, Punk and Danielson. And they're just doing these these few debuts here and there. And I think they're gonna mm-hmm. have Wyndham just come out of nowhere with like, just yeah. So yeah, but I. But I, I I have changed my stance. I think that he probably end up will being he he probably will end up being the uh, leader of the Dark Order, the new leader. Uh, the Wendell. Uh huh. Okay. Because I I don't know where else. You, I mean, you can slot him somewhere, but I think when you with with House of Black being there, I was thinking know, if you don't do a cult of Wyndham, you or a new Dark Order leader, you could slot him with House of Black. I thought about that too, and I have no problem with that. But I, I'm thinking about the star power, and mm. if he might end up overshadowing Black, and that's my only problem. Because thing is, I would I would slot him he perfectly fine. Would, yeah. He's willing to take like you know a somewhat of a back seat for for a moment. Mm-hmm. But I think because he's he's that big of a star and he has that much star power, it's hard to slot him as like a secondary. So true. That's my only issue, but I think he would be a, he would be a fantastic fit for it because that would oh my gosh that stable would be fucking crazy. But it would be. yeah. <laughs> but the uh, the storyline culminates to Hangman finally winning the big one. Got it. Yep. Yep. Now where he goes from here, I have no fucking clue. But I, be Brian. Uh, well, I mean, yeah, I know Brian's next up, but I, I, I have a feeling that he's going to beat Brian. Oh, uh, yeah, sure. Because I think if you were going to take that title off of him, then you're better off putting it on MJF, like immediately, just to get that, just to, to get that volcanic heat. Yeah, yeah. Because Brian winning it is going to be bittersweet because it's like you, you almost expect it because how good he is. But I think with Hangman having the having his confidence back, it's going to elevate him in a way to where he he's, his title reign is probably going to be the most memorable because he's going to have these fucking matches that actually are so meaningful. Because I see him taking on Brian Miro, probably Mox. But I think he ends up losing it to MJF. I can see that. It's either going to be losing to MJF or Miro, but I think the 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 higher percentage is on is on MJF. MJF. He may not even see Miro. I'm just throwing Miro in there because it makes sense. But you know, yeah. But but we'll we'll we'll, de- we'll definitely see. But I'm going to throw it to you guys as far as. Final thoughts or ending thoughts on the overall of Full Gear? Scoot? Uh, wasn't a bad pay-per-view. It was definitely some missteps with some things. But, you know, the good moments were the good moments. The great moments were great moments. So at least it wasn't one of those pay-per-views where the bad stuff overshadowed it. So I'm happy with that. And yeah. I guess we could see where they start going come Wednesday. What about you, Jaeger? I will say, or I'll echo Scoot in saying that wasn't a bad pay per view, but I mean, it wasn't a it wasn't an all out. No. Oh no. No. But uh, I'm excited to see when Wyndham is going to start making his little his little subliminal messages. I'm uh. I'm kind of intrigued on where this whole Andrade and Malachi Black thing go. Mm-hmm. I mean, oh, it's yeah, got to go. Yeah. Whatever it's going, it's got to go up from here. 
Um, One would hope. <laughs> <laughs> right? I know. Don't, don't WWE us now. <laughs> but let's see. Hangman winning, there's going to have to be a celebration or something like that for Wednesday or Friday. Oh, and... I'm, glad fact, I'm glad we. I'm glad you said something because Hangman sent out a press release. Oh, he sent out. He said for release sometime after BTE goes up. I guess. Hangman Adam Page shares his thoughts after being crowned All Elite Wrestling's World Champion at Full Gear. After celebrating his championship win over Kenny Omega at Full Gear by sharing 17 orders of baby back grills from Chili's with the Dark Order. (laughs) (laughs) Answering 74 congratulatory, congratulatory text messages to asking Two asking to get them book on dark and obnoxiously snoring his way through two early morning Delta airline flights home. Hangman Adam Page has decided to share his thoughts about the intentions as AEW world champ. Bullet point one. Hangman Adam Page is declaring that this Wednesday, November 17th, as the first National Cowboy Shit Day with celebrations live from his home state. Of Virginia this week on Dynamite. Bullet point number two. He will continue to in- increase his strength and cardiovascular training and add additional dynamic and static stretching to his routine to limber out his rigid frame and study the vegan diet in order to prepare for the number one contender, Brian Davis. <laughs> <laughs> As champion, Page will welcome all other challengers as AEW sees fit, but please, God, don't make him fight Wardlow and his big muscle tits again. (laughs) His big muscle tits. Bullet point four. After seeing the unofficial, unauthorized, and most brilliant display of I don't give a shit about copyright, the good, the bad, and the elite series on YouTube, Hangman Adam Page will use his new leverage as champion to get that guy a job or at very least a nice letter and fruit basket. <laughs> Next bullet point with the bonus payment that comes with winning the AEW championship, Hangman will trade in his gas guzzling truck for an electric vehicle in an effort to reduce planet warming emissions and encourage others to make the switch when they see how badass it looks with steer horns mounted on the front or whatever. What the hell? <laughs> The last bullet point. Hangman Adam Page would like to send a genuine and heartfelt thank you to the many fans that never gave up on him. Even when he gave them every reason to, they helped him accomplish more than he ever had imagined. Then it says at the end, if you would like to hear more of Hangman Adam Page's thoughts on his recent championship win, tell them I ain't doing any more of those podcasts as long as I live. You think I want to be on the Don and Dookie YouTube show or whatever. Yeah, right. Get a clue. I'm a champion now. I got so much shit to do. I'm already so stressed. There you go. <laughs> and then it says at the end about the whole uh, National Cowboy Shit Day, there was a asterisk on it. And the asterisk is pending approval from the National Day Archives, which I really doubt is going to happen since their last correspondent simply said... Stop emailing us about this. <laughs> so that was Hangman. You forgot. You forgot uh, the things that were mentioned in that last bullet point. That the fans who may have, you know, who stuck with them and may have lost any crowns along the way. Um, <laughs> Pretty sure it wasn't written there. But it wasn't. We, it wasn't. But we all we all know. I, I never gave up. It's kind of frustrating. Because they didn't give up. Cost me something. Yeah, it cost you know. me something too. Whatever. I'll I mean, back. he didn't get to Wailing on Callus. There wasn't a turn. It's okay, guys. Whatever. The next, the next pay-per-view is not, not that far away. In the meantime, okay. I'm going to do like all... All Rose he does and sit in my throne here. 
And uh, this this why this why this why he chose to switch seats. Exactly. Mm. This, this this seat here has uh, seen generations. It's been passed down from one family member to the next. So uh, and it's and it's quite fucking comfy, despite it being a little creaky. Mm-hmm. I All mean, good. it still has like still has the wooden handle for the for the recline, you know. Ah, there we go. Bed bugs to go with it. You know what? Not been bitten yet. Let me <laughs> knock on wood. Let me knock on wood. Oh wait, the whole damn thing is. Oh. Uh. <laughs> All right. Just, just, just know. I, I hope, I hope everybody enjoys their their time because you know. I mean, y'all will probably win it off of me with Royal Rumble because I don't watch WWE for shit anymore. Neither do I. I mean, well, NXT, but I mean, I mean, does that even count? I mean, it's WWE light, isn't it? I mean, look, even if there is a Royal Rumble, who fucking knows? They I don't even they're gonna, they're, they may not even have enough people by that time to have a fucking Royal Rumble. <laughs> do they even have thirty male and female superstars to to, to set up right. a Rumble at this it, point? It doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, like we always say, you know where you can find us. If you want all that fucking smoke, this guy right there, that guy, all the smoke, all the smoke, all of it. Ladies, if you want a different kind of smoke, this guy, that guy right there. You want to see how comfy the, the throne is? Come on over. Send him all your bath water, all Whoa. panties, there all the go. love letters. If you can find Shotzi, wrap her up nicely and send her over there. Um, same thing with Red Velvet. Woo. He, he, yeah, he has plenty of space under that Christmas tree to fit her right under there. Or, right if, or he'll there. make space. Um, get, your, get treats for Loki. All that other shit. Um, matter of fact, find Scoot a new sword for uh, for the one time he may potentially try to run for the crown again. Um, you know where I'm at. Positive all day, every day. Send all your shit to Lip D's Lay. It's whatever. But what I will fucking do. Oh, matter of fact, avert your eyes to the bottom. And get stealthy with the ninjas. Yeah, yeah. Boom, 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 boom. Your boy Scoot over here, Boss Aranya Zert. Chime in for a good time. Chime in for a good time. But let me just warm that shit up real quick so I can give a nice too sweet to my bros. Bada 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 bam. Bam. But as we say, like always, whether you loved it, hate it, don't forget to rate it. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Leave all your comments, concerns, questions down below. Hit that notification bell for all the freeze tag. The Jaeger After Dark, Jaeger Elevation. Tag me in hot tag, tag tier list. All the shit that's coming, trust me, is going to be a lot. But most importantly... Don't forget to mother effing subscribe. And until you see these handsome faces and hear these immaculate voices, I bid you all adieu. And a mother effing tag the fucketh out. Out.